Hello, I'm Anka. Welcome to my art studio. There are a lot of myths and a lot of nonsense talked about watercolour painting. So in this video, I'm going to try and get rid of some of those myths for you. So, are you ready? One or two of the myths I'll just tell you about and one or two of them I'll just demonstrate something for you. So the first one is that you have to be gifted or talented in order to be able to paint and draw. That, my friends, is a load of rubbish. When I was born, I'm a typical Cornish girl and I was born with blue eyes and black hair. <laughs> yeah, I did. I had black hair. Seriously though, the things you were born with, you have no control over. I have no control over the colour of my eyes, I have no control over, control over how tall I grow and things like that because they're in my genetic makeup. They're in my genes. Now here's the good news folks, the very good news. There are no genes for painting and there are no genes for drawing. There are no genes for playing golf, there's no genes for playing the piano. Whatever you do in life, it's all down to hard work. You do not inherit the ability to paint or draw from your parents. No scientist has ever discovered a gene for painting or a gene for drawing. If you've looked at my little introduction video on the page of my YouTube channel, you will see that I tell people that there are only three things that enable you to be able to paint and draw. The first one is you have to have a passion for it. The second one is you need good materials and good instruction. And the third one, which is probably the most important, you have to put in the work. Now I've been painting and drawing since I was three years old. Now, if I haven't got good at it by now, then something's gone wrong along the way. So when you hear people talking about, oh, they're so gifted or they're so talented, do not believe them. It's a load of rubbish. It's all down to hard work. Another one of the many myths out there about watercolour painting is, oh, you can't, you can't rub it out, you can't get rid of it. Once you've painted it, it's there, you're stuck with it. No. Absolute nonsense. Let me show you. Imagine I'm painting something. I take a piece of sponge. Now tell me you can't erase watercolour. Absolute load of nonsense. It will, of course, depend on whether you've used a staining paint or a non-staining paint. And you have to be careful about that. So when you buy your paints, look on the tubes and it'll tell you whether it's a staining paint or a non-staining paint. You'll find lots of little um, instructions on the, or details on the side of the tube. And that will give you the information that you want. But to say you can't erase watercolour, is a load of nonsense. Another myth is you can't do a good painting without professional materials, expensive paper and everything else. Yes, you can. Having said that, I would always, always recommend people to buy the best quality materials they possibly can. Because yes, you will get a better painting if you use good materials. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean to say that you can't get a good painting with other materials. There are some very good student quality materials out there, like Windsor and Newton Cotman. They are student paints, yes, but they are good quality student paints. I'm not talking about the rubbish that you buy in supermarkets and um, chemist shops and things like that, you know, five pounds for 12 tubes of paint. They are rubbish. But if you get some good quality student paints, yes, you can do some very good work. But I would always, always recommend people 
to get the best materials they can possibly afford. And the most important material, surprisingly enough, is your paper. Good paper makes a huge, huge difference. And until you've tried different papers, you won't realise what a wonderful difference it does make. One more myth that I've come across is that if you're using a big sheet of, of paper to do a fairly large painting, in order to get soft edges, you've got to wet the whole paper to start with and keep it wet while you're painting. No, you don't. You couldn't possibly do that. You'd be panicking because the paint's drying. Let me show you how you can keep little soft edges without having to worry about your paper staying wet. If I wet an area of my watercolour paper and I put some paint on it, if I want to have soft edges, I just have to make, I just have to make certain that the paint doesn't get as far as the edge of the water because when it gets to the edge of the water, that's when it forms a hard edge. But if I let it float around on the water like this and just let it bleed out as far as it wants to, provided I keep the area around it out here nice and wet, I will always have a lovely soft edge to my painting. So you can just work on the area that you want. You do not have to wet the whole of the paper in order to have lovely soft edges. Another myth out there is that watercolour paintings are all weak and watery and wishy-washy and very pale. <laughs> well, they are if you make them that way, but you don't have to. Let me show you something. Would you call that pale and insipid? Would you call this one pale and insipid? I don't think so. It all depends on the quality of your paint, because good quality paint has more pigment in it than, than cheap paints. Cheap paints will have lots of fillers and um, chalk and white paint and things to fill them up and not much in the way of minerals and, and pigments. Um, but good quality paints, look at the strength of those colours. Also, many people water down their paints too much. So if I water this down, yes, it will go wishy-washy. And if you're going to paint with paint that looks like that rather than that, yes, of course it's wishy-washy. So the problem is either you've got paints that are very, very cheap and they don't have much in the way of pigment in them or you're using too much water and you end up with what we call wishy-washy paintings that look like that. So two more myths got rid of. <laughs> Another myth floating around out there is that you've got to have the right brushes in order to get the right techniques and produce the right lines and the right effect in your paintings. Well, I've actually made a little video about buying brushes and I'll link that up there just above my head so you can click on that. By the way, when you click on these cards, it doesn't take you away from this video. It just lines up that one for you to, um, to watch at the end. So this myth about having to have the right brush in order to get the right effect in your paintings is nonsense. <laughs> Let me show you something. Now, this is my collection of brushes. <laughs> I've collected these over the years by thinking, now if I just have that brush, it'll make my painting better. Or if I use this brush, then I'll be able to do that technique much better. What a load of rubbish. Now, I don't use any of these brushes. They were, they were a total waste of money. I've now got five brushes in my little brush pouch that I use all the time. And if you look at my um, video about brushes, which I'll link in a card just above here, 
Um, have a look at that, it's quite funny and it uh, explains about all the different types of brushes and how to choose yours. I hope that's got rid of some of these myths for you. So you don't have to be talented or gifted in order to be able to paint or draw. That is a load of nonsense. If you would like more videos like this, then consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon because that will notify you when I upload another video. If you've enjoyed this one, then give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember everybody, there is an artist in everyone. Goodbye for now.